I'm gonna record this for us. Okay. So uh, just know that we're being recorded and it might go on the internet. So before you share something that you don't want on the internet. Fair enough. Tell me and I'll stop the recording for us. All right. Um, so let's just start off talking to me about uh, a lot has happened since your last coaching thing, right? Uh, just a lot with work. I've got a lot done with my budget. Uh, basically got my entire year mapped out since I got my schedule with work for the year. Um, so I basically know where I'm projected to make per paycheck for the next year, essentially. So that way I can kind of stay ahead of my budget. Uh, I've got my bills now under just under 5,000. Uh, what I what I have debt wise. Um, so just trying to get rid of that as quickly and efficiently as possible. And what is it that you have left? Is it school loans or credit cards? What is it? Uh, 2K in school loan, $2,000 in school loans, $2,000 to PayPal, and then $1,000 in random credit card debt. Okay. And so, so uh, you're going to try and do? I'm doing roughly $1,000 a paycheck uh, towards that debt. So about two, two to 2,500 a month is what I'm chipping but the away. The minimum with. on school loans and the minimum on PayPal and then knock out the credit card first. Um, I've been kind of going hundreds at each, um, just cause I have been still kind of using my credit cards when I need to, right. uh, just because I'm using as much money as I can to knock out this debt. I'll end up, you know, depleting my checking account. So then I'll switch to credit cards for gas and food for the week until I get to payday or whatever um, and replenish everything. Okay. Well, um, the credit cards are a good tool. The only thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we use them and then pay them off in that month. Okay. So we don't have any interest. That's the main thing. The thing about the credit cards is we absolutely don't want to pay any interest to the bank. So um, what uh, PayPal has been my largest focus just because I know that one is a higher interest on some of the things I have financed through it. I've been doing the zero five zero percent when I can um, and paying it off on time but not everything I have financed through them is 0%. What kind of stuff are we buying on PayPal? Car parts. Okay. Car parts. For people that don't know you, that's your disease, right? Yeah. Race that's cars my, and building my, my things weakness. together. And how, uh, uh, how is your lawsuit going with that body shop? Um, so they have been served. I have court February 10th with them. Um, so basically, I just have to get my end done and finalized or at least ready to go appear in court with them. And, and for the people that are listening, um, you were getting a car fixed over there and uh, they gave you a, an estimate of $4,000. And then when it was halfway through, you uh, got a kind of a surprise bill for twice as much. Is that about it? Uh, yeah, so originally was quoted $4,500 for some body work. They got one side done, uh, honestly, way quicker than I had anticipated. They called me down to come look at it and then hit me with a 93% uh, increase in their original quote. Um, so, yeah. And then the work was not satisfactory. Yeah, the work was not satisfactory at all after that. I mean, poor body lines. I've had another body guy look at it and just was absolutely blown away that that was the kind of body work coming out of that shop. And that shop's been in business for 10 years. They just had their 10th anniversary last year. And you called me up and uh, we talked about it. And uh, together we kind of decided that the best course of action was going to be a small claims suit and what you did and again this is really just for the people that are listening but 
what you did was you documented everything. You got together with your father. You both went down there, witnessed everything. You uh, got everything on film. You organized your your bills and your quotes and all the stuff together. And um, then you're going to kind of proceed through the courts with this little financial dilemma. Correct. And, and I'm just kind of going over that just because, you know, I think it's helpful for other people to, you know, hear somebody else going through that and really what the best way to handle that kind of thing is, you know, because there's a lot of people that cause themselves problems because they get into a fight or some kind of a yelling match or whatever, or they, they don't garner enough evidence. They just go off emotionally. And, and then, you know, when it does come time to present the evidence in court, then you're not ready. Exactly. And that was my thing is knowing somebody like you and being at a point I'm in in my life, I knew the first thing I needed to do was reach out to somebody else because at that moment in time, I was emotional because like we said, this is my crutch, my habit, my, my one thing for me. And, you know, that car is my heart and soul. I mean, I'm one of two people that have turned a wrench on that car. So when it came time to somebody was basically holding it hostage against me. I was, I was very emotional about it. And I knew I needed to take that emotion out of the equation. Well, uh, Justin, I got to tell you that I, I'm, I'm seriously proud of you for that big step, you know, and a lot of people your age, you know, they don't get there yet is, you know, Hey, I need to get some help. Yeah. You know, that's a big, that's a big, hard step. You know? Oh man, I I have been before that step, and I will yeah. tell you, I am very proud of myself for making that step because it's not something I would have done even five years ago. I would have went in there yelling and screaming, or I would have went in there tucking my tail and walked out and let them take advantage of me. Well, and you know, the whole purpose of my network and everything that I'm doing is to, to help build people up, whether they're in small business or, or whether we're mentoring or coaching or doing whatever. And, uh, you know, it's my great hope that later on, you know, you're going to be helping people like I'm helping you. And, and hopefully right now, somebody younger is going to watch this and say, well, geez, maybe, you know, he got the point at 24 years old, maybe... I'm going to get the point at 18 years old. And then we've done our job. You know, we've really helped somebody out. So exactly. great job on that. Great job on handling that. And then we'll, we'll kind of keep everybody up to date as we do some further stuff. Um, but as far as the debt goes, you're working on that. That's awesome. Um, after we get rid of the debt, um, we need to talk about getting some money into savings. Absolutely. And um, your, uh, your overall situation that you're in is you have a fantastic job. Fantastic. And you make gobs of money. Yes. For a young guy. Yeah. And we're not going to, we're not going to talk about exactly how much money you make, but um, the, uh, the goal going forward is, uh, what um basically to save for retirement and try and set myself up to where i don't have to work so hard i don't have to work so much overtime and basically set myself up to where my hard work and money can work for me in the long run now um you're putting away in your 401k Yes. Uh, right now, I believe I'm at 9% with a 1% increase in June. And the company is given some kind of a matching thing with that as well? 4% uh, per paycheck. And then next month, I should get a 7% of my base dumped into my 401k. Nice. Nice. So they, what, they have a fantastic 401k program. What are you investing inside your 401k? What, what kind of products do you know? Um, I know it's an aggressive diversity, but I'm not entirely sure uh, because it's through Fidelity. I have it set up where I can basically give permission to one of their advisors 
to basically change my portfolio to, as they see fit. And so okay. far, it's been paying off for me so far. So I haven't changed it. I, I want to give you a little bit of homework and, and I want you, I want you to start looking at that fidelity account. Okay. Logging in there. I want you to see what positions you're in. And the next time that you and I meet, I want to uh, sh screen share that and go over that. And I don't mind you having somebody making moves for you, but I want to make sure that we're completely understanding what those moves are. You know, Absolutely. So that so that we can we can allow them to be making moves that we agree with. And, and, and let's let's also find out how much they're charging us for that. I want okay. to put a real dollar amount on that um, because it's important, you know. And generally, it's going to be um, one percent of the outstanding balance. Okay. So if you've got a hundred grand in there, then that's, you know, that's going to cost yeah. you a thousand dollars for them to manage it. Now that, oh, look at this. I'm wearing, I'm wearing the wrong shirt. I lost <laughs> a gang of weight and my, my girls bought me this petite Papa shirt. That's that I always wear my big Papa shirts. So they bought me a petite Papa shirt. <laughs> now I'm wearing it on TV. Um, but I want, I, I want you to know, um, what the exact costs are in that. And later on, you know, we may want to go with it for a while, but I want to use that as an educational opportunity for you to say, Hey, look, it's worth it to me Yeah, to be paying these guys $8,000 a year because it's worth it. I, yeah. I don't want it to be worth it to you because you don't understand what they're doing. I don't Correct. want you to do it because you think, oh, they know a lot more than me. They're better than me. Um, Cause these guys you know, and ladies that do this, God bless them. They get their 1% whether they lose or win. Correct. You know, they lose your money. They still get 1%. So I want to kind of have a little bit more accountability more than, hey, look, I just don't understand that, you know? And, uh, you know, you're a car guy and, um, you know, I have to go to mechanics all the time and I look for ones that I can trust. However, I try to learn a little bit about what's going on with my car so I can have a reasonable discussion with the guy. It yeah. doesn't make me a mechanic. It doesn't make me as good at it as he is. However, you know, I know the difference between you know, drilled rotors and rotors that aren't drilled out. I mean, I, I do a little bit of, of research to know that I'm, I'm making good choices. And then I shop around to make sure that, you know, hey, they're charging me the right price. Yeah. How much does it cost to do an LS swap into a, a 69 Suburban and then slam it on bags? You know, I got to do some research. Yeah. And, and one thing I have been contemplating, because um, I know when I was going to Lodge, we had a gentleman that worked for Fidelity. So I was thinking about reaching out to him and seeing his advice since he works for Fidelity and trying using some of my connections to see if he would be able to advise me on my account and what would be best. Yep. There, very few times is education going to be a a lose for you. Correct. But, uh, let's you and I just kind of review it until we get to the point where you're having a little bit of an understanding about what ETFs are, what, you know, what those, those uh, mutual funds are, what they do, um, you know, what the safe ones are, overseas growth, um, you know, the different categories. Are you interested in buying individual stocks? If so, why, you know, my, uh, I don't have any money in the market right now because of the volatility that's going on. I just kind of stepped away on the sidelines, but when, when, when I was in the market and when I returned to the market, typically what I do is I like to look for stocks that are providing a dividend, nice okay. blue chip stocks. Um, and I'll take my, one of my favorite stocks, for example, that I really like is XL Energy. 
and XL Energy over the time that I had it double in price. You know, so I bought a hundred thousand dollars of XL Energy and ended up with two hundred thousand dollars of XL Energy because it went up. But yeah. the reason that I bought it was that it paid a dividend, and every quarter I got like. 1100 bucks from my dividend. So not only was the stock growing, it was paying me a dividend back into my account. And um, the, uh, the third thing is it's very stable. You know, people are going to keep turning their lights on. People are going to keep turning their heat on, you know, there, there's very likely the very low likelihood that Excel's going under. Yeah. You know? So I, I buy good companies that pay dividends and then I don't jack around with it too much. And, and that, that's just my, you know, go-to strategy, but I want you to develop your own go-to strategy and uh, you know, we'll work on that next time. And, and uh, so that is one thing I did get into a few months back is I kind of did take some, money I had saved up and decided to play around in the crypto market a little bit with cryptocurrencies. And you and didn't call me and you didn't get my approval. No, I did not. Um, so unfor luckily it's, it's playing out very well. I'm, I'm still up about 80% give or take. Um, but I mean, again, I got back, I got in back in October, um, which was right before you and I had our initial meeting. Um, and well, for the benefit of the listeners, here's what I'm going to say. Bad, bad boy. Yes. I don't invest in anything if I have debt, you know, and some of the guys, some of the financial advisors out there will tell you to stop investing in your 401k. I don't do that. I keep that turned on. However, the other investments, you know, gold, crypto, whatever else, houses, whatever it is that you're that you're investing in, um, starting up small businesses. I tell a guy like you or the, the people out there, invest in yourself, because if you buy your own debt as an investment, and you say, hey, look. I've got this PayPal loan. Well, it's a certain amount of, you know, 7% interest or whatever it is. If you pay that off, you're guaranteed to get a 7% return on interest that you never have to pay. And that is a good bet. That is always a sure thing is a good bet. So my advice in this situation is however tantalizing it is to try and get into these investment situations before you're you're paid before you own yourself meaning you don't have any debt always invest in yourself that's my advice um after that you know then you can kind of split up your resources in in kind of different piles like for me when I get 100% of whatever money that I'm going to have to invest, 70% of it goes into real estate or real estate type investments. 30% um, of it goes into starting small businesses. Okay. Because a small business, if I invest $10,000 in a small business, I'm probably going to get um, double my money in the first year. And then I get to add value as I go along in these small businesses and I make a ton, but there's more risk. So if I buy a property and I manage it correctly and I don't have any debt on it, typically what I'm shooting for is a 1% gross return on the rents on that, that facility. So if I buy a $100,000 place, I want to be renting it out for $1,000 a month. Got it. Um, so um, that's me. I'm old. You know, I'm, I'm grown. I'm a millionaire a couple of times over. My house is paid off. 
you know, I have money in the bank. Um, your situation is going to be my situation. As a matter of fact, when you're my age, and you're how old, Justin? Uh, 30. 30 years old. I'm 58. So in 30 years, you're going to be far richer than me. You know, however many millions I have, if you keep doing what you're doing right now, you're going to be far richer than me. And you're going to be able to make these same decisions that I'm making, you know, at this time in your life when you're my age. So the, your situation is going to be similar, but you don't want to try and do 58 year old things at 30 if you're not ready. Yeah. So we're going to pay that debt off. We're, we're going to do something for ourselves that emotionally is huge. When you don't owe anybody money, that's a freedom that you just almost can't describe. You know, it, it's really nice being down to just two credit cards, PayPal, and a student loan. It's it's really nice just being able to write people off now. Well, you are doing a fantastic job, and you know, it's that that's one of those things that you just really have to have self-discipline because it's a delayed gratification thing, like going to college or becoming a doctor or whatever. You got to really suffer now. I mean, you can't buy that new turbo for your car or yeah. you can't buy that new motorcycle or you can't take, you know, some girl to Europe or whatever. You know, you really shouldn't be eating in a restaurant if you really want to just get really, you know, lean. But, um, you're experiencing the uh, joy of watching your plan come together. And, and you worked on a spreadsheet. I did. That you and I are going to talk after I turn this recording off. You and I will just kind of, you know, do your session after that. But that spreadsheet of your net worth and, and your bills and all that kind of stuff, that kind of gets to be a game, right? Oh, it does. This has already turned into a game since our first meeting. It's, you know, what can I pay off the quickest? What can I, you know, what can I roll this debt into? Okay, I'm done paying this bill off. What can I take that monthly monthly payment and roll that into? It's it's becoming a very fun game. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let the listeners go and I'm going to stop the recording. And then you and I will get back together and um, review your stuff. But Justin, thanks for sharing your story for everyone else out here that really is wanting to get started. You can you can tell them that if you follow the hope formula and you get a little bit of coaching that you're going to have some success, right? Oh, absolutely. No doubt about that. All right, buddy. I'll see you on the other side. All right. Sounds good. Thank you.